Thanks for joining us on another weekly update on the stable, Chris. Uh, obviously a good day last Saturday with Madam Nash uh, winning at Warwick Farm and the exciting tactics she adopts certainly makes a, a, you know, a really good horse uh, for racing and a good horse for people to follow. And obviously ran with yesterday, uh, fast and sexy, back to, uh, back to the fore after you know, showing a, a lot of ability as a two-year-old. Might as well turn the camera around and put it on you, Liam. <laughs> Uh, but no, <laughs> it was a um, good good uh, reward for Madame Nash to win that race. I wouldn't say she's a superstar, but she's won over three hundred thousand dollars in prize money. And I think the key to our system is identifying sound horses that you can race, um, and through the war of attrition, you see a lot of horses go by the wayside and. I think our crew buy sound horses and therefore horses like her can continue on racing and picking up good prize money. Saturday was a frustrating day for us with the protests in the inquiry room. Um, obviously Clever Boy won what I thought was well, uh, making it three in a row and unfortunately we were denied in the, in the stewards room but that's racing and um, it's a big financial loss but hopefully we can make up that not too distant future and even Sacred Flyer to some degree was taken out of the race and still managed to run second but it was just too hard to prove that the winner winning by length um, cost us that margin of the interference. Now it's certainly good to see that the glass is half empty and not half full with you Chris. Uh, you've, you've won more races than anyone this year and still complaining. Good to hear. Anyway we'll jump into Saturday. Uh, Rose Hill and Melbourne. We'll just start with Rose Hill. Uh, the three-year-old's relaxed and happy and clever boy. Um, clever boy, I think keeping an open mind on horses is the best way to go and that's exactly what we've done with him. It's all about trying to find the right race when they're in form. And I can't find the right race for him, so I thought about backing him up on Saturday. So he's in the field. We've got up until 7.30 Saturday morning to make that decision. Um, <clears throat> it might seem hard backing a horse up, but it all depends on what you do prior to their racing or during their racing preparation or in between runs. And I like to think that we're pretty kind on our horses and give them plenty, to, plenty of variation. And therefore, when you want to back them up, they can. And, you only have to look back to John Size. He used to race the horses just about every week, and they'd win three or four in a row. Um, it's all about getting them happy and keeping them happy, and when they're in that frame, they certainly win races. Both look very good chances in the race. Uh, relaxed and happy, 1,400 metres looks the query, and clever boy, uh, he's, he's been first past the post in his last three. Uh, you've taken the blinkers off and put the winkers on? Yeah, just to try and open things up a little bit for him. Um, he lays in and out and does a few little things wrong <coughs> and you're always experimenting and learning about horses and we'll continue to do that until we get it right. Relaxed and happy I think, although he is probably a 1200 metre horse, 1400 metres will allow him to get to the front or if he doesn't want to leave, allow him to cruise a lot easier. They just go that little bit slower over the 1400 metre distance so that's the reason for stepping him up and Clever Boy comes back in distance um, once again simply because it's the right race so he's done little little fast work this week in fact none just keep him ticking over and making sure he's nice and fresh for Saturday if he does run. The fillies and mares over the 1350 metres two runners uh, Caesars Princess is the second emergency and Barry Miller uh, obviously only just got beaten by the barest of margins at that Monday meeting at Rose Hill a couple of weeks ago. Yeah she's working her way into good form that was a pleasing run and proves that she's up to Saturday grade and um, up at this level. So she'll be hard to beat and she's drawn well. Caesar's Princess, the reason they've balloted her out is because the rail's at eight metres and they've had to restrict the field size, uh, which is unfortunate for her. So I'm hoping that one of the horses drawn out wide may scratch or two of them may scratch so we do get a run because uh, I'm looking forward to stepping her up to 13 and 15. If she doesn't gain a start, we'll have to find another race for it. Uh, the winner stakes, uh, obviously sponsored by Ingham's. A uh, couple of runners here. Wasn't first up off a lengthy spell. Yeah, 
early on he was very competitive over these shorter distances and from memory he, he won a 1400 metre race here. But um, after a long layoff, plus a little bit older, I'd say it'd be a bit short, but he certainly has come back well. I think he'd be in for good preparation, so if he finished midfield, I'd be more than happy, but don't expect too much from him. And Cope AT, uh, disappointing run last start after showing good form uh, for his first few runs in the preparation. He looked to bounce back on Saturday? I'd say so. I th what we've found in the last few weeks is these heavy tracks really do uh, affect the horse's performance and there's doesn't seem to be any way of knowing which horse will handle which track. <coughs> um, <coughs> I think take away slow track form, take away even heavy track form in the summer, it's completely different to the heavy tracks in winter and um, until you try them on it you don't really know. And here's a classic example of that last start, it was very wet and I think back on a slow track on Saturday can bounce back providing you can overcome that barrier draw. And the 2,000 metre event, uh, three runners here. First of those, Elo, got the big weight, uh, but John Kissick stays aboard. Rode him perfectly last start. It was your choice of rider, Liam, so despite being behind the camera, you can make all the funny things you want, want to do, and it was your credit, so. Um, <coughs> no, thanks a, for that, good to get a bit of recognition. He's a good rider, nice strong rider, which is what I like, and um, good head on his shoulders too, so. This horse is not an easy horse to ride, he's fortunately drawn well. He doesn't need to be ridden too close and that would be the problem over 2000. He's got enough brilliance to lead it, but we don't want that because he doesn't finish his races off. So it's a right race, big weight, he just needs to be ridden with patience and he could win the race. Uh, the second of those, Sacred Flyer on the backup. Yeah, he should have won last start over the mile and I would say that would be a career best win had he won that. Uh, he's won over longer distances but hasn't showed the same form over the shorter trip so he's come up very well. He got galloped on in that race but fortunately <coughs> no infection has come of it and therefore he should strip fifth and ready to run a strong 2000 on Saturday. And the third runner from the stable, Lou Crippus. Uh, awkward draw but obviously a very good run last start. Yeah, he, he has no tactical speed so We've just been managing, or we've managed to get him out of the habit <coughs> of jumping slowly, but it looks like on Saturday we're going to have to ride him conservatively, but at the same time we'll make sure he jumps. Um, and we'll just have to ride him patiently, maybe get going a bit earlier because he's just lost a little bit of that dash and probably looking for a little bit further now, but his last start run was very good. Heading down south to Flemington, uh, three stable runners there, the first of those Thumbtacks. Um, been a great horse to the stable <coughs> and um, might be his last run for us on Saturday. So hopefully he goes out on a, on a good note. Um, I think the distance will suit the big track at Flemington, certainly will. He's drawn wide, which is a concern, and obviously he needs speed on because he'll be getting back to get cover. You don't want to be caught wide at Flemington. Um, but everything's been good since he's been in Melbourne. And the uh, two mares in the, in the open mares event, uh, Pipette, uh, big weight for an open handicap race on her rating? It is. Um, I guess it's got some reflection on the strength of the race though, Liam. So we've um, sent Alicia Collett down to ride her and she's going to base herself down there for a month just to try a hand down there th through um, a lack of suitable opportunities up here. And She's ridden the horse before and fairly straightforward horse to ride. I think the 1400 will suit, as will the big track, and a good good surface to run on. And Eliza Blues, very good run uh, at Caulfield first up. Yeah, she's well out of a grade, but as you say, she did run uh, well first up and at her best form, which we haven't seen for a while. She's certainly up to these horses. So on the strength of that first up run, it looks like she has returned in good order. And I'll be looking for a mile now, but once again, this is the big best race we can find and on her day she's a very handy horse so in the right race. And uh, the next of my questions was going to be about Alicia Collett but you took my material so I've got nothing to do with that. Um, this time of year, middle of July, it's it's cold, It's uh, it starts to quieten down. Uh, the Premiership is uh, obviously well and truly over and all the fanfare around you breaking the record is, uh, is now finished. How do you uh, 
Yeah, how do you compensate sort of the, the last final couple of weeks of the season? Do you prepare for next season? Do you, uh, you know, spend a bit of time at Double Bay having lunch? You know, what are you up to? Um, try and tidy up, tidy up a few loose ends, Liam, and and also just plan for the spring without getting too far ahead of ourselves. Um, it's a good time just to make sure your systems around the stables are in place and try a few little things. We've been doing different sort of work with a few horses, getting their base fitness levels up higher without sort of disheartening them. And uh, that's about it really. And go through all the staff, make sure the staff are happy and, and working towards the same thing and, and making sure racing manager managers are doing their job and not just pumping on the, on the tab website <laughs> most of their day. Uh, uh, through the week we received a, a beautiful package, um, a gift uh, from an unknown person, but Bill Calabria, West End Estate Wines, uh, a couple of bottles of red there, I'm sure you'll share them around with the team. Um, he's obviously a recipient of the Order of Australia Award this year as well. Yeah, no, that was good and, and we have received a lot of recognition from um, this season which is greatly appreciated and it's been... Um, very much appreciated actually and a lot of people I've never heard of have contacted the stable and congratulated us all so that's um, pleasing and the job now is to continue and make sure we can stay um, near the top of the Sydney training rings. Anything else doing? Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> right, thanks mate.